This is the second segment of vaginal bleeding. In this segment, we're going to be discussing the reproductive aged female who is pregnant. That is someone early on in their pregnancy who is bleeding and has a positive urine pregnancy test. We're going to be talking about two different things, abortion and ectopic pregnancy. Let's start with the different types of abortion. If a fetus is going to abort, it will follow a natural progress. It will begin as an intrauterine pregnancy. And as it becomes unviable, it will progress through a threatened abortion, which with bed rest, it's potential that you can continue the pregnancy, transform into an inevitable abortion, which means baby's dead and is coming out. The dead fetus will pass, marking an incomplete abortion. And then once the os closes and everything is out, it is deemed a complete abortion. And this is the way I think about missed abortions. Is that baby has died and mom hasn't figured it out yet. Mom's body missed the abortion. So it doesn't fit into this pattern. And what you need to be able to do is identify mom who was pregnant and who may be in the process of aborting right now and be able to identify where she is along the spectrum. You're going to use the passage of contents the state of the os, and what you see on ultrasound in order to determine where she is along the process. A normal intrauterine pregnancy is going to have no passage of clots or contents because baby's still alive, the os is closed, and the ultrasound shows live baby. A threatened abortion is one where there is fetal distress Mom is bleeding, but it looks just like an intrauterine pregnancy. And if you can get baby and mom over the episode, the pregnancy can continue. Strict bed rest is recommended. But as you move into the inevitable abortion, it's happening. Baby has died. Mom is ready, but no passage of contents has occurred. Mom is ready, so her os is open. And if you look at the ultrasound, baby is dead. In the incomplete phase, the dead baby is being expelled. There has been some passage of contents, but mom is not done. Her os is still open, and there may be retained parts. This is a continuous process from inevitable to close, so until all of the fetal parts are expelled, they also remain open. In the complete abortion, there has already been passage of clots. All the clots have been removed, so her os is now closed, and there is no baby on ultrasound. That is, her uterus is empty. And since it doesn't mix in with my natural progress, a missed abortion will have no passage of contents. The os will be closed, yet there's a dead baby inside. Mom hasn't yet realized baby needs to come out. And if you find a missed abortion, you'll need to do a suction curatage or dilation and curatage. And if there are any retained parts after the os closes, you may have to go in and remove those as well. So the test question is going to ask you, what type of abortion is it? And you have to make the decision based on the passage of contents, the os, and the ultrasound. So that is the type of stuff or abortion you have to know. Let's now talk about ectopic pregnancies. So someone who comes in with a urine pregnancy test that's positive and is having vaginal bleeding. It may be normal. Vaginal bleeding during pregnancy, especially early on, a little bit of spotting isn't necessarily a big deal. It's not a sign necessarily that they're going to abort, and it may just be a normal intrauterine pregnancy. But you really want to find out and the ultrasound is the most potent tool you've got in order to evaluate baby. So, not surprisingly, you're going to use the transvaginal ultrasound in an attempt to identify an intrauterine pregnancy. UPT positive, you're hoping it's a normal pregnancy. And if you obviously have an intrauterine pregnancy, that is, you see something in the uterus, 
you have to decide whether it's just a healthy baby, in which case you need to treat her as if she's pregnant, see the OB videos, whether it is an abortion where you have to decide what to do based on the stage they're in that we just discussed, or is it a mole? And if you see a snowstorm pattern, instead of an actual fetus, it's a mole. And moles need to be removed with a suction curatage. Put on OCPs for a year and followed up with a beta HCG every week. There's more on this topic in the mole lecture. So this is the best case scenario. You've got intrauterine pregnancy and it's baby's doing okay and the vaginal bleeding is just a sign of being pregnant. That does happen. But what if you put a transvaginal ultrasound and you clearly see an ectopic? Ectopic pregnancies are never normal, and if you allow them to grow, mom's going to die. But what the decision you have to make is, is there a rupture or not? Ectopic pregnancy is discussed in a diagnexal masses lecture, but here is a, basically how you make your decision. You're going to use that ultrasound to see if there's any free fluid or rupture, and you're going to get a beta quant. You're going to quantify how much beta HCG is in your blood. Because if you have rupture, of the tube, you are going to perform a salpingectomy. That is, you remove the entire fallopian tube. If there is no rupture, you are going to perform a salpingostomy. You just open up and remove the ectopic. You don't necessarily have to take out the entire tube. And if it meets all of these criteria, you can be conservative and use methotrexate. No surgery involved. But they have to meet all four criteria. The beta HCG has to be less than 8,000. The ectopic has to be less than three centimeters. There have to be no fetal heart tones. And mom could not have been on folate because folate protects against methotrexate. So generally, an ectopic pregnancy is going to surgery. You decide whether it's a salpingectomy or a salpingostomy. Every once in a while, if you meet all four of these criteria, you're able to use medication. So this is what happens if you have a positive UPT and vaginal bleeding when ectopic is obvious or intrauterine pregnancy is obvious. The way you get the bonus points on the wards and the way you get that one extra question on the shelf is what happens when you don't see anything. And that's weird because you've got a positive UPT and transvaginal ultrasound is really good at identifying intrauterine pregnancies. What happens if you don't see anything? This is the time where the beta quant becomes incredibly useful. UPT says yes or no. Beta quant tells you how much. Because until the beta quant has reached 1,500, you may not be able to see an, an intrauterine pregnancy, even with a transvaginal ultrasound. So if you do not see anything on ultrasound and the beta quant is greater or equal to 1,500, you should have been able to see it. If baby is far enough along where it's making this much beta quant, you should be able to see it on transvaginal ultrasound. If you don't see anything in the uterus, you assume it is ectopic and treat accordingly. But if it is less than 1500, you really can't be sure if it's in the uterus or not. You just can't see it at all. So if it is less than 1500, it's too soon to tell. And if it's too soon to tell, you're going to repeat the beta quant in 48 hours. You may actually just send this woman away and say, come back in 48 hours, I will repeat the beta HCG, the beta quant. And here's the thing. 
An intrauterine pregnancy will double in size, will double the beta quant in 48 hours. An ectopic will not. Regardless of what the starting number was, if the beta quant doubles, it is an intrauterine pregnancy and is treated as such. Once it reaches 1500, you repeat the ultrasound just to make sure. But if it fails to double, it is not an intrauterine pregnancy and is assumed to be an ectopic and is treated as such. All right, so in this lecture, what we decided, what we discussed was what to do when there is a woman who is early on in her pregnancy, that is positive UPT, and has vaginal bleeding. Recognizing that vaginal bleeding during early pregnancy is okay, but you have to know how to diagnose an abortion and what to do about each kind, and then what to do about an ectopic pregnancy, especially when you are very early on and the transvaginal ultrasound is not reliable to tell you intrauterine pregnancy versus ectopic. That is, when the beta quant is less than 1500. The answer is, repeat the beta quant 48 hours and see if it doubles or not. This is the second segment of vaginal... We make these videos for free, and we need your help. Please donate, because without your donations, we can't make any more videos. Please donate!